Welcome to this video on interfacing SciScan with other applications using ActiveX. I'm Arjun Prakash, a software developer at Scientifica. The LabVIEW programming language in which SciScan is implemented can act as an ActiveX server, which allows other ActiveX enabled applications to access properties, methods, and uh, individual UIs within LabVIEW. So you can find an example of using Python as an ActiveX client for accessing LabVIEW controls and indicators in the URL that's uh, shown on your screen now. With an online search, you can also find similar examples for other programming languages, which include MATLAB, C++, etc. So we have tested this feature uh, of using ActiveX in both MATLAB and Python and the relevant code examples um, with detailed instructions on how to run it are available inside your SciScan folder. So within the root folder, you can see the ActiveX connectivity examples. And so we've got a detailed document which explains all the different steps on how to run the examples and so on. And you've got a MATLAB um, example code as well as a Python example code. In this video, I will be demonstrating uh, the use of Python to, to get and set values of size scan variables from the Python interface. So the process is very similar uh, for MATLAB, except for some minor changes in syntax. So I'll open up my Python interface. For this demonstration, I'm using the spider interface to execute the Python code, the example codes. So this interface is included in a Python distribution called uh, Anaconda, which also has uh, ActiveX libraries bundled with it. So this is available for download for free in case you're interested in the URL shown. Okay. So if you open up the example file, in this case, Python, the first section of the code uh, imports the required uh, modules. And the, the next line here, the path to GFG translator and the path variable, this needs to be set to the uh, path where your GFG translator resides. You can find this GFG translator.vi in your uh, SciScan root folder. So I'll just show you where it is. So this is my SciScan root folder and this is the GFG translator. And you can obviously you could just copy the path and uh, paste it here. So I've set this up uh, for my system at the moment. What we do next is to uncomment the section of the code that you want to execute. So I'll uncomment that. Now before we start executing the code, uh, a quick note regarding the way the examples are structured. So you have two example groups. So example A, read data from SciScan. So these are all get methods. And the example set B, these all deal with uh, writing data to the size scan variables. So basically these are all set methods. So I'll get rid of all the previous uh, printouts there. The first example here is a get method for reading a string variable. So what we'll do is read the experiment name from size scan. So I'll run and I get an error code, lab view error. Uh, and the error message asks you to check if SciScan is running and in this case it is not. So what I'll do is start up SciScan, uh, wait for the modules to all load up. So now all the modules have loaded up and we can execute the code again. So I'll run this. So now you've got uh, the status as success and it shows that the GFG variable experiment dot name that we queried for is demonstration. So we can verify that uh, by going back and going to general settings and that's our experiment name. So I'll just change that to experiment name as demonstration two. And if I were to run that again, you get demonstration two. Going back to the code and looking at the code in more detail. So the GFG action is get because we are reading a string. The 
data type is specified as string and the variable name is the variable the gfg or the size scan variable that you want to read so typically these three values are what you would need to modify according to the data type and the action that you want to perform as well as the variables that you want to query and this section uh, it sets the corresponding controls in the gft translator you get the result in the result variable and the status in the status variable as well so i won't be going through all the examples because it's uh, pretty much uh, a repeat i'll also go through uh, another get example for acquiring an image basically getting an image as a 2d array and plotting it in python so i'll comment this code snippet we have already tried out and i'll go to reading an image array so i'll uncomment this as before and i'll click run so the status is success but then you also get this uh, message which says that you've got an empty array so it's because uh, we don't have an image in size scan so we'll go ahead and focus to get an image i'm running a development system so this is basically simulated data that you're seeing but uh, it would work the same way uh, if you're imaging on a live sample as well and i'll click run and i've plotted the image there so i'll click run again and you've got another image so the status is success so next we'll go to the setting examples the example set b so i'll just comment this let's first try setting the number of frames to acquire so i'll uncomment this so what we are going to do is as before but then the action is set and we are going to set the number of frames to acquire which is so i'll just stop focusing there and in 2d frame number of frames to acquire is 64 at the moment and we'll just set it to 20 run and i've got the status as success so i'm printing that out and if we go and check back you can see that the number of frames has changed to 20 and i yeah, could change it to 50 run that first and that's 50 there next we look at uh, carrying out a focus and a record from python so i'll as before comment this section and i'll go to the boolean reference type so this is one thing that you need to note uh, which is a bit of a special case for focus uh, record and cancel due to restrictions enforced in size scan you cannot use the ordinary boolean type to set um, these three uh, particular buttons or variables so for focus record and cancel i need to use boolean ref data type so i'll uncomment the section and i'll set the gft data to set as true and when i run it so the focus is true and it starts focusing so i could make it false as well so i just type false So it's similar case for record as well. So I'll change the variable name to record and say the number of frames to 20 and I'll be recording to E and I'll make the data to set as true. And I'll just run it so the record is happening and you can see that 20 frames have been recorded and if i go to the place where it is recorded so you can see that the data is, is there 
So next we'll look at uh, setting absolute stage positions. Absolute stage positions X, Y, Z. So I'll just uncomment that section. And you can see that the, just get rid of that. The positions are all zero at the moment. So I'm going to set it to 12, 22, and 32. And for absolute stage positions where you set all the three axes together, uh, it's a special case where you use the data type as string and the values as a comma separated group of the three axis values for X, Y, and Z. And I'll just run this and it's set to 12, 22, and 32. So similar to this, you also have this option for setting the virtual X, Y, Z. So I'm setting 12, 22, and 32 with virtual rotation. So again, this is also a string. You need to set the data type as string. And I've entered the absolute values. And I'll run this. And, and you get the rotated values. Please note that the special case of uh, set absolute XYZ and uh, set virtual XYZ is a write-only property. So you cannot uh, read the XYZ values using this property. So along with setting all the three axes together, you can also set the absolute values of either X, Y, or Z and is set using the data type numeric. So remember that if you're setting all of them together, you're using a string with a comma separated uh, representation of the three axis positions. So here I'll use numeric and the variable name is abs x. So I'm going to set x to a value of 10. So I'll, if I run this code, you get 10 here. So similarly, you can set for y and z. So as mentioned earlier, other examples are very similar to this. You just need to set your action data type and the variable name appropriately, as well as the data if you're setting data. The one thing that you need to note here is that you need to make sure that you have got your variable name right. In this case, if I were to get the variable name wrong, if that's what I tried to set, I would get an error obviously because the variable name is not found. So I get GFG variable not found. So you need to make sure that you've got the correct variable names. Uh, one way you can find that is you'll need to quit SciScan. And if you activated the context help in LabVIEW using control H, so you've got the context help up and you can hover over the the control that you want to query so that's focus and record so that's the uh, experiment type you need to note that in some cases the label name can be different to the actual variable name and in those cases one example is y resolution so if i hover over y resolution you can see that there is another value y dot pixels beneath it uh, in square brackets so so in cases like this, you need to choose the value in the square brackets. And in this case, it's y.pixels. A list of all the SciScan variables and the associated data type is available on the SciScan knowledge base. So this concludes the presentation on interfacing SciScan from other applications. So as mentioned, this works similarly uh, with MATLAB. And we have also made the MATLAB code uh, available. So I'll point you to that again. So in ActiveX connectivity examples, you've also got SciScan MATLAB connectivity examples. In case you have more queries or you need more information, you can always uh, go through the SciScan knowledge base. And alternately, 
you can always get in touch with uh, your scientific representative who would be happy to help so thank you for listening